Thank you, Massey. Thank you, worship team. Why don't we thank every single person that serves in the worship team every single Sunday. Thank you all. From the lights to the sound to the live stream, every one of them does an amazing job so that we can get to enjoy beauty. We're going to talk a lot about beauty today. Hello, church. I'm David, and I'm so excited to be here today. Normally, I get to experience one of the most joyous sights in all of creation. That is the people of God worshiping their creator and singing with joy the truth of scripture and singing to him who is worthy of all praise and experiencing his presence that fills us and gives us life and hope. And so the reality is, since we came here uh, with Vasti, we've always commented on how beautiful you sing. You really do sing beautiful, and we love that you get, and we get, to experience that together. And if you're new here today, I just want to uh, welcome you and, and encourage you and say that uh, you are welcome here. You belong here, and that here you will find a church family that will love you and accept you just the way you are, because that is the kind of love that we have received from Jesus. We have been accepted, loved, embraced, and not only that, His goodness pursues us every single day. So that is the kind of love that we are here to share with you. And uh, our pastor Derek, as Drew said, he is uh, on a spiritual retreat, uh, and he's learning a lot, and he's experiencing a lot of uh, beautiful things, so I'm sure that when he comes, he's, he's going to have a lot to share with us, and it's going to be great for our church. And, and so I get to be here uh, sharing the Word of God with you. Uh, let's be praying for Derek. Let's be praying for Mallory and the kids as they um, experience a few days here by themselves. So last week, we started a new series, which is really cool, about the best stories ever told by the best storyteller of all time, Jesus. And the name of the series is Parables. And as Jesus told us these parables... The best teacher of all time uses very simple concepts and stories to teach us deeply and to challenge us, to see things in a new light, to see things from his perspective, to see things like they truly are. So we're going to dive in right into Matthew chapter 13. So if you have your, your Bibles, you can use that. The, the uh, parable is always going to be on the screen as well if you don't. But we're in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 uh, verses 31 and 32. It's a very short story. Jesus doesn't need a lot of space and time to tell us very deep things. But he said this, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Okay, so I think Jesus loves farming. I think he loves farming. And it's not just because the people that he was speaking to, they knew about farming or they were farmers themselves. I think that Jesus, God incarnate, loves things that grow. He is, after all, the creator of all the universe. And he enjoys seeing his creation grow and develop, and mature, and give fruit. And that is exactly what happens when seeds, the seeds that he created, fall on good, fertile soil. That is what we learned last week in the first parable, the parable of the sower. And uh, Derek taught us, uh, through Jesus' teaching, that our hearts are that soil. So our hearts can be good, fertile soil for the seed that God wants to plant in us. And so we have to really take good care of the seed of our heart or the soil of our hearts. We've got to be aware of what's going on there. We want to uh, invest in taking care of that soil. But we're not alone. We have help. And the helper is the Holy Spirit. He is the person of the Trinity who not just, is not just with us here now, but he indwells us. He is inside of every single person who has put their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ. So through the Holy Spirit and the work that he does in preparing and making way for that soil to be, uh, to be good soil and to be ready to receive the water and the, and, the, and the light and the seed, 
and through listening and understanding the word of God, our soil can give much fruit. But the other part of the parable that we heard last week is that seeds are the kingdom of heaven. Seeds rep represent the kingdom of heaven. So our souls, our hearts are the soil and the seed is the kingdom of heaven. Now, have you heard the phrase, big things have small beginnings? Now, uh, Drew already referenced a movie. I'm going to reference a couple. If you're older, maybe you've seen a movie called Lawrence of Arabia. That phrase is in that movie. Big things have small beginnings. And if you're younger, maybe you saw it in a, a crazy movie called Prometheus, which is referencing that movie as well. But the fact is that big things have small beginnings. And there is nothing bigger than the kingdom of heaven. Would you agree? There is nothing bigger because the kingdom of heaven is ruled by the biggest king of all. King Jesus, God incarnate, the creator of all, of all the universe, everything that exists. And what's really, really, really cool is that Jesus doesn't just want to evacuate, evacuate us, I'm sorry, evacuate us, take us out <laughs> of, sorry for my English, evacuate us from this place into his kingdom. Really what he has done is to bring his kingdom right here to us, to earth, because when he came in the form of a baby, and then with his life, with his death, and with his resurrection, Jesus was bringing his kingdom to us. And the kingdom of heaven is all about restoration. It's all about restoring all the things to God's original purpose, to display his wondrous glory. That is the purpose of all the creation, to display his glory. And so, the kingdom of heaven that he brought is all about restoring that. To restoring all of the things that sin and decay have brought into our world, into us. So the fact is that when we experience this world, we do experience a lot of beauty. When you see your children, when you see your wife, when you see your husband, when you see your family, when you see the nature, it's beautiful to experience that. But we also, we also experience a lot of injustice. We also experience a lot of pain and of hurt. There are things that are just wrong in this world. There's cancer. There's hunger. There's war. There's natural disasters. There are mosquitoes. <laughs> mosquitoes. But the fact is, <laughs> I'm glad I got to preach on that. The fact is that sin brought evil and brought corruption into the perfect world that God had created. Because when we sin, that's what happens. And we sin against each other. We sin against God's good creation. We also sin against ourselves and ourselves. And then we sin also against God. And this brings pain, pain and decay into the world. But it is in that middle of that decay and pain and brokenness that Jesus stepped in. Jesus stepped in and he brought with him this new kingdom that he seeds plant in the hearts of each and every person that is good, fertile soil. Because you see, the restoration of the world began with Jesus and will culminate with Jesus. When Jesus was resurrected from the death, when he defeated death, sin, and the grave, Jesus was the first fruits of the restored creation. And he was bringing a beautiful new reality into our world. And when Jesus comes back, he will reveal that kingdom fully that is breaking into our world through his church and through the people that love him, through everything that he comes to us to bear fruit. Because the fact is, through you, through his church, the kingdom of heaven is right here, right now. We don't have to wait. The kingdom of heaven is right here, breaking in, taking deep roots in, the, in our hearts, but it's not yet completely revealed. That will happen when Jesus comes back. Okay, so now we know the soil, we know the seed, and the kingdom of heaven is like that seed. Now, what is the purpose of a seed? The purpose of a seed, of any seed, is to germinate, to sprout, to grow, to mature, and to give good fruit. How many people here have a green thumb? Do you have a green thumb? There are some people here I know 
So Vasti does definitely, my wife Vasti, have a green thumb. And uh, a lot of people gave us, when we got married, some plants, and we've acquired some plants, and uh, Vasti takes a beautiful care of them, and now our home looks beautiful. They started as little things with no flowers, and now they're flowering, and they're lush, luscious, and it's beautiful to see, and they're making everything look beautiful. Now, Vasti does not just bring beauty with herself, with her smile, her personality, her voice, also with the ability to grow beautiful plants, and I love that. I love her. Now, that is beautiful, and to grow anything, we know that we need patience. Growing takes patience, and also the growing of the kingdom of heaven in our hearts will need patience. But you know what? God is really patient. He is never in a hurry. Because time is God's realm. I read recently that time is the cathedral of God. It's where God inhabits that space of time. And so when we, in the middle of our busy lives, make it a habit, make it an intentional habit, an intentional pursuit to be still, to pause, and to let Him do the work, when we give we set up our time, we give that time to Him, you know what happens is that our leaves start going up to the sun and the watering of the Holy Spirit begins to happen and the Holy Spirit for the photosynthesis begins to make us and help us grow. But that requires patience. God can do what only He can do if we are but still and we take intentional time in order for the seed in us to mature and give fruit. So now, now we know all of this. Let's go back to our parable, the parable that we read today. Jesus is comparing the kingdom of God to a very specific kind of seed. Not just any seed, but the mustard seed. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a mustard seed. I had not until really preparing for this talk. But our wonderful sister Lynn, she went out and got these packets that we're all going to get one when we leave today and uh, they say the faith of a must the size of a mustard seed we're going to get to that but uh, as you see the 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 seed is extremely small i mean it's tiny but remember big things have small beginnings so let's look at the tree which comes from that little seed it's incredible that god is able to make that happen it's amazing that so much growth can happen and now the most mustard tree and the plant also produces flowers, beautiful flowers. And those flowers have seed pods inside. These seed pods are the ones that produce the seeds that we use to make mustard. Now I know because I've had some conversations with some of you that there are specific kind of mustards that you like. We love the fruit of that tree and we're very specific about the taste of that mustard. So... As that tree grows and produces fruit, there are three things that Jesus wants to tell us, at least that I want to share with you today. And those things are this. As the tree grows, first, it displays beautiful flowers. Second, it produces more seeds that can be made into mustard. And third, it serves as a resting place for birds and for animals that want shade. And that is exactly what happens when the kingdom of God begins to grow in us, begins to mature and begins to give fruit. First, the first thing is that through flowering, we begin to display beauty. So if you're taking notes, just write that. The seed of the kingdom of God in me displays beauty. Now, what, what kind of beauty? Let me ask you, what is the most beautiful, beautiful thing in the world? If you're married, the correct answer is your wife. That is correct. You can go ahead and tell her right now. Just say, Connie, you're beautiful. You're amazing. You can text her right now if she's not here with you. You can thank me later. <laughs> but we, as a church, we display a specific kind of beauty. Not any kind of beauty. Not a visible kind of beauty, but an invisible kind. One that is from within. So that is what we call kingdom beauty. And the beauty of the kingdom of God, kingdom beauty, is displayed in how much we look like Jesus. 
Because there is no one more beautiful than Jesus. And when we display his beauty, the beauty of his character, the beauty of his attributes, the beauty of the perfect God that is within him and with the way that he lived, and when we adopt his rhythms, what happens is we as a church become the evidence of things unseen. And we'll go back to that. So the more that we are with Jesus, and who doesn't want to be with someone so beautiful and kind and loving and embracing and understanding and patient, when we are with him and when we are still and we choose to do that, what happens is we start becoming a little bit more like him. And again, it is a process. I, I lead uh, or help lead another church, a Espanol church, and I've been there from the very beginning when there was nothing. And now we have four churches and we're going through many things and transitions. But one of the things that for me have, has been hard is patience. Like, why don't you get it? I just want to shake you. Get it? But God is not like that. God is not like that with you either or with me. And praise Him for that because we need patience. We need to have patience with ourselves. And we need to know that God is producing beautiful things and he's displaying beautiful things through our church and we're going to talk more about that in a moment but the second thing that happens is not not only that we produce beauty but those flowers then have pots inside that produce more seeds so the second thing that i find in this parable is the, the, the flowering of the kingdom of god produces more seeds because beauty is attractive isn't it beauty is attractive when we live like jesus we become attractive when we adopt his rhythms when we adopt his habits his rhythms of life we become attractive so by being with jesus and becoming like jesus and doing the things that jesus did we are producing more seeds by attracting others into that kingdom because let's face it again this world is broken and when you go through something hard in your life a diagnosis when you go through a family crisis, a financial issue, something unexpected, an accident, an injustice. When you go through any of that, you have the opportunity to display the beauty of the seed that is inside of you. The kingdom of heaven to flower, to bloom even in the midst of the mud. And others, they will notice. They will begin to ask questions. They will see that you are not reacting like everyone else to difficult difficult things and you will have the opportunity to share what the kingdom of god is all about to share that the that, to share the hope that you have and for the holy spirit to break ground in another heart and when you go when you see someone else go through something in their lives a co-worker a family member a friend you're able to invite them into the kingdom of heaven because you know and you can share that that brokenness, that pain, that sin, that, that health issue, all of those things, even death has an expiration tag on it. And that is when Jesus came, comes back. And since we're, we're talking about flowers, I don't know if you've seen something called the lotus flower. I saw this uh, recently. The lotus flower is beautiful, isn't it? It's so beautiful. But the amazing thing is that the lotus flower rises from the mud stainless rises from the mud beautiful it's literally what the seeds of the kingdom of god do we rise from the mud of the brokenness in our own lives in this world from the sin and the decay beautiful and stainless because of the blood of jesus christ that redeems us and makes us beautiful and so while we wait for that kingdom to be revealed fully we can already experience and display the beauty and the power and the restoration of the kingdom of heaven in our lives, in our church, and invite others. Because this is a time of grace. This is a time where we get to invite people. That is how we should see evangelism. Evangelism is not knocking people in the head, trying to tell them to change or to do stuff. It's more of an invitation. An invitation into a kingdom that is being renewal for this world and hope for this world and the fact is also like we said that the mustard tree and the, the the seeds of the mustard tree are different because there's diversity in the kingdom of heaven and it is a beautiful thing as well that we get to experience here in the u.s to see 
Different kinds of seeds, kingdom seeds and kingdom beauty emerge from different people. And to taste different flavors of that. And I know that Jesus loves each and every flavor. Because our creator loves to see his kingdom grow, germinate, grow, mature, give fruit, display his beauty. And emerge beautifully from the mud of our brokenness and our past. And so the third thing that I want to share with you that Jesus does here is that he says that the seed of the kingdom of God serves as a resting place, a resting place. And I want to share with you uh, the story of my grandma. Her name is Euphemia, and we call her Avi, Avi. And uh, she died about a decade ago uh, through lung cancer, but... When she was born, she was born in a very small town in Chiclayo, in Peru. I've been there. It's, it's very small. It's beautiful. But uh, she was born there, and uh, she was born to a family that was uh, broken. And the husband had uh, an affair, and she had another, he had another family. So she went to live with them, and she was the eldest, and they had many children. So instead of going to school, the mother, her, her stepmom, kind of like Cinderella, made her take care of all her children, or all her siblings. So she had to iron, she had to mend, she had to cook, she had to take care of them. She could not go to school. But in the middle of that, a missionary... And that we're so grateful for missionaries that go out and preach this seed. And, and, and like farmers throw it out. A missionary talked to her and she received the seed of the kingdom of heaven. And that seed began to grow even in that mud. Then he mo- she moved to Lima to get married to the capital. And unfortunately her husband also decided to have another family. And she left her with three, four little kids. One of them is my mom. And the seed that grew into this beautiful flower started blooming into these children. And she began to make clothes. And she went to seamstress school. I still have clothes that she made for me. She made clothes for them. She provided for them. They went to a beautiful, good school, bilingual school. They learned English. And so when it was time for my, grandma, my mom to emigrate to, the, to Mexico to marry my dad, where he wanted to do ministry, she was able to teach in a bilingual school, a very rich bilingual school. And I was able to go there for free and learn English, and have a great education. But most importantly, that beautiful tree that was my grandma's faith was covering us, and was helping us to rest in beautiful things that we never could have had if she had not let that seed grow in her. And now I'm here speaking to you all, because that tree became a resting place for us and our faith to grow. Because you see, big things have small beginnings. My grandma is an example of that. And you know what? She never had to stand in a pulpit like this to do it. She did it through simply displaying the kingdom of heaven through her life. Even to this day, there are people that were helped by her that continue saying testimonies about her life. There's a a lady that she took in when she was abused by her husband and left and she took her in, and she lived with them, and now their son is helping us. We're, we're going on vacation in Peru soon, and he helped us with the itinerary for this. The kingdom of God and that tree is still providing a resting place because someone decided to display the character of Jesus. So the question is for us, how can we as a church do exactly that? How can we become a resting place by displaying the character of Jesus? Well, I would argue that you all are already doing that. When I started coming here about a year ago, I had to go into, uh, Basti and I started coming here and leading worship. We had, I had to go to a, um, a, a missionary trip to Cuba. And a beautiful family from here invited Basti to their home so that she wouldn't feel lonely. A lot of you have invited us to your home as well and have accepted us even though we look different, we're different, and you have provided a resting place. You have even given us Christmas cards in the mail, and what's so surprising, you have uh, said some beautiful things about how we're leading here. You have encouraged us, and we feel like we can rest here 
And we talk about that. We can rest in this place. And, and you know what? That's not the same everywhere. I've been to many churches, and that has not always happened. So the kingdom of heaven is already being displayed in this place. And my prayer is that that can continue and even abound. Because my prayer is that every, and I, I know that your prayer as well, every single person that comes through those doors is able to find a resting place, is able to find a place of beauty, is able to find a place of growth. And so, big things have small beginnings. But everything, everything starts with something called faith. So I want to finish with this. The author of Hebrews defines faith as the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So faith is the confidence in what we hope for. What do we hope for? We all hope for death and decay and hunger and natural disasters and all these things, injustice, to stop, to be restored, for all pain to end, for death to be gone, for mosquitoes to stop bothering us. I, I do. <laughs> In essence, what we hope for is that the kingdom of heaven is revealed, is fully revealed. And faith, the author of Hebrews says, is also the assurance about what we do not see. Now, how can you be assured of something you do not see? That seems weird. It doesn't seem straightforward. How can you have assurances about something you cannot see? Well, you can see glimpses of it. You can see reflections of it. You can see beauty in lives like my grandma's. You can see lotus flowers emerging from the mud of the brokenness and their past. And stories and testimonies of people being transformed. You can see something that only God can do. You can see places of rest like this beautiful family of faith. But it all hinges on where your faith is. Because we all have faith. We all have hopes that something will give us a return. Financial hopes. We have hopes for our family and what they will accomplish. We have hopes for our capacity to accomplish things. And all those things are great. They're good. They're good gifts from the Creator. But they're not places to put your faith on. There's only one place. And Jesus said this. In Matthew 17, he said, Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So again, we see the mustard seed. But this time, Jesus is referring to the power of a faith like the size of a mustard seed. Because you see, faith in the right hope can produce big results. Amazing things can happen when you put your faith in the right hope. And our faith in Jesus and in the kingdom of heaven gives us confidence to hope. Hope that is anchored not on something irrational, not on something theoretical, but in the resurrection that truly did happen where Jesus conquered death and sin and the grave and He will come again. And so... Faith gives the world assurance about this through things not visible, made visible by His church. So when, we, when you let the kingdom of God grow in your heart, when you invest in making your heart good soil and let the Holy Spirit do the work that He can only do, when you're still, when you decide to set apart time and open up your hands and say, God, you do what only you can do, mountains can be moved. The mountains of despair, the mountains of abandonment, mountains of financial difficulties, mountains insurmountable can be conquered by your faith in the right hope. Because you see, it's not about the size of your faith as much as it is where your faith is placed. Not on the gifts of the Creator, although those are beautiful, your capacity, your family, Music, beautiful things, sports, all of these are good gifts, but they're not places to, for you to put your hope because big things have small beginnings. If you put your hope in Jesus today, 
He will do amazing things. And that is what I want to invite you today. Even though you have already done this, maybe make a revision of where your hopes are today, where your faith is today, and put your faith in Jesus. And if you have not done this before, His kingdom is at hand. It is here. It is now. Taste. Come and taste. Come and see and experience His goodness. I invite you. Experience His kindness through this church family. Experience and be transformed into a mustard seed, into a lotus flower that can be beautiful, emerging from the mud, stainless. If you want to take that step, just mark it on your connect card. Come talk to one of us. We would love to guide you through starting that journey. Now, before we leave today, we're all going to get one of these packets that says, with the faith the size of a mustard seed. And what I want to invite you to do is a couple of things. One is, just look at the little seed and be reminded that it is not about the size. It's about where. It's about where your faith is. And two, maybe, especially if you have a green thumb, you could maybe plant it. And you could put it in in maybe a place, a a glass bottle, and and see that seed with patience and taking care of it and and giving it time and intentionality. See it germinate and sprout and start growing. And let that remind you that that is the same exact thing that God wants to do in your heart through His words, through the Holy Spirit. And throughout this process, my prayer is that you're reminded continuously to give time space for the kingdom of heaven to break in through you into this world and maybe you can show your children and and remind them that this is a process that this is what's happening because the seed of the kingdom of heaven needs attention needs care needs patience needs consistency and needs to be made good soil through the power of the holy spirit the watering the constant sunshine that is his word that is irreplaceable but also there are other things called fertilizers. Vasi has brought some fertilizers and because part of why she has a green thumb. But those fertilizers are really helpful. And so we have invested in this library here, this beautiful library. And this library is full of books about spiritual formation. Spiritual formation of our souls. I want to confess something to you until a few years ago. I grew up in church. My dad's a pastor all my life. I went to church even before I was born in my mother's womb. But the fact is, I didn't seek out these resources. I thought, well, I'm listening to the Word of God through the sermon teaching. I am seeking God every day through His Word. I'm praying. I don't need these things. But you know what happened a few years ago when we started reading these things, when I started reading these authors that have struggled and wrestled and lived these things out, I started to grow. And I started to understand more deeply. And I started to see wider and see more about what God would like for me to know. So we want to equip you with these, uh, with these books. So just go through that uh, website, uh, lakespringschurch.com slash library or uh, scan that code and what you will do is very simple you just um, fill out the form of checkout you take the book you have it for 30 days you read it if you need to check it again you can do that and then you bring it back so that people in other people can take part of it and read it and every single uh, Sunday we're gonna give you a book recommendation today's book recommendation is Ruthless Trust by Brennan Manning Ruthless Trust by Brandon Manning. So if you want to take it, check it out today, you can also buy it. You can invest time in your spiritual formation. So two things. First, watch the seed of the kingdom of heaven grow in your heart. And, and let these seeds be a reminder. Maybe be an encouragement to your children so they understand this from very early age. Because big things have small beginnings and invest invest in your own spiritual formation start reading maybe this summer can be a summer of reading a summer of a continued or at the start or a continued investment in the kingdom of god in your heart so let's fix our eyes on jesus the author and perfecter of our faith let's pray god we are so thankful for the seed of the kingdom of heaven that has been and is being planted 
in our hearts. God, we are so thankful that we are not alone in that process. That the maturity into a beautiful flower that produces beauty and displays your beauty and produces more seeds so that others are able to invite your kingdom into their lives. And a tree that can be formed from that little seed of, of a rest, that can serve as a resting place for people. God, we are so thankful that you do all that. We're so thankful that you are doing that even as we speak. And that we can emerge victorious, stainless, beautiful, last lotus flowers from the mud of our past, of our brokenness. And so God, I pray that this church can continue being that beautiful display of things unseen. Beautiful evidence of what we hope for. God, I pray that that can happen as we put our hope solely on you. And we choose to just fix our eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith. Help us to do that, God. Help us to do that as a community together. To be able to put our faith in you and not in your good gifts. And to grow as a result. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So every week we do something beautiful together. We take communion. We remember what Jesus did for us on the cross and what he has already accomplished in us. And so the kingdom of heaven and the seed grows through what only Jesus can do. And again, there are a thousand things you can put your trust in. Money, success, fame, acceptance, leisure, pleasure. But there's only one that will never let you down. That will fully satisfy you. And that is Jesus. His name is Jesus. So as we take communion today, we can take it here on the sides. There are tables in the back and uh, Wydell and others might uh, will be there ready to pray for you and for you and with you. Let's remember and believe what Jesus said. He said this, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches so let's take communion and let's pray to God that he grows something beautiful in us in our church and in Holy Springs let's do a church